I was giving him some feedback because his build was like a starting build that he just started playing the game. And he was telling me how, how much he struggled against Maruna giants, the ogres, you know, uh, he couldn't kill them. But, oh, just uh, make some, look, uh, do some changes into Lightning Blast. He, he made some changes. I said, okay, okay, I'll listen to you. He's pretty nice, right? And then he does like an arena run with the changes. And you could just see the smile on his face while watching the giants melt like a, like a, you know, like getting fried like a chicken. And, oh, you could just see the satisfaction of him like, oh man, this is so good. So it's, uh... and he was doing fine damage with it right before, but he made like a few adjustments and then he made like the skill really, really good. So it's what basically what you're talking about, right? It's, it's, it's great when skills have that in my opinion. Yeah, and I like when they're hidden in there, where you like have to get. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, one, there's multiple combinations that work well, but then yeah. there's like when you do get one of those combinations, it just puts a smile on your face. You're like, damn, I just like tripled my damage. No one else yeah, has yeah. done this. Like, this is sweet. I gotta show people. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you've had. I think we've had anybody who streams or came to the game. They've they've had moments like that. Like, uh, yeah. Even the people that that. Uh, you know, weren't the easiest to get along with. Like, like we had Scourge yeah. that came in and used yeah, Frostbite yeah. with the with the uh, Shatter Strike. Yeah, yeah. That that puts a smile on your face. Like it made. Yeah, yeah. He was happy when he played the game because you know. That yeah, was, yeah, for that was sure. Sweet. And a lot of people were like, "That's really cool." Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's just it's just great. And uh, it's one of the benefits of Last Epoch being uh, still on early, right? Like, uh, obviously, there. That's what I would recommend people to join the games too, just because. You want to be part of this, right? Uh, like we're like the we're like the colonists almost. You, you know, we're, we're the first to get there. And but by the time people join the game when the game releases, right? Uh, we're probably gonna find about everything already, right? Like all the skills will be released. All the characters will have like three thousand hours played. Uh, so if you're a new and um, all the guides, you know, all, it's gonna be less chances to find these gold nuggets when the game is already being played by thousands of players, thousands of hours, right? That if you join now, you can be part of the, like the discovery kind of like, which I think it's really enjoyable. And uh, right now also, because there's not really competition, uh, right? I mean, people are competitive, but it's more like a like we're all happy for each other's success, right? I think it's so cool that everyone's sharing what they find, right? If someone finds like a very OP build, no one's gonna keep it to themselves. Like everyone's gonna be open about it and they're gonna see what people can do with it and they're gonna perfect it. And it's just like a really good environment to be on. So I love it. I've, I've thought about that and I was like, you know, it'd be really cool if I found one build for each class and just keep it to myself. That's like the best. <laughs> and then at release, <laughs> just all these new things just come out. But I, was yeah. like, I, I think that enough people have played enough where you can't really hide stuff like that. Like most yeah. people have found most of the interactions and until new content comes. You know, yeah, yeah but that's the thing, right? We're getting new, sh like, look at every patch, we find, like, this new broken thing, right? First, it was the Soul Fist, Ward craziness, then we had the Spellblade craziness, right? Then we had the Soul Fist back, like, doing 4 million damage, right? <laughs> like, there's definitely shit to be found still. And again, we still have, like, classes and skills and skills to be released, so... Uh... Who, who know? And I assume, who knows? I assume, for example, we're gonna get. I I assume we're gonna get more idols than what we have right now. Like oh, yeah. idols, definitely. Like who knows what the idols can add, right? And because idols can really change how a build behaves. So yeah, and, who uh, knows? Maybe new affixes, new. Look at how much the sentinel affixes. You know, the conversion changed. Like suddenly, sen sentinel went from being like a niche pick that no one played to now being like this monster. So. And all it took was like two changes, right? Like the vengeance change and the and the the idol, uh, the sorry, the gear, the affix, the conversion affixes. So yeah. Yeah, and I, I agree. Like you were saying, um, even at release, I feel like people like me that you don't have that three or four thousand hours of playtime. I have a feeling mm -hmm. there's going to be so much new layers. We're not yeah, actually yeah. going to be able to test it all. There's not enough people to do it. I mean. Yeah. Imagine how many more layers of the game that are already coming up. You gotta think about it. they're gonna add sockets, they're gonna add dual welding, they're gonna add new uniques, new items, yeah. new affixes, new characters. Especially because right now, if you wanna test stuff, you can't just test it because you actually have to farm the gear, right? You have to farm the character, you have to level, you gotta. And some of these gears and some of these affixes and some of these idols are actually hard as fuck to get, right? So 
<laughs> and I think they're gonna make some of that easier. Like it, it was easy when you it was think? in the shop. I think it's gonna be. I, I think it's gonna be harder there. Uh, I don't know. I think they'll cut like maybe idols, but like when idols were in the shop, they were so easy to get. We stocked up on them. Yeah, you, know, yeah. They were, you could get so many. And now they're like the rare ones are almost impossible to find. Like you literally have to play yeah. for hours and hours and just hope it trust. I think that somehow yeah. they're gonna make it somewhat targetable. But the other thing, you're gonna have the bazaar. You know, things are gonna yeah, you're gonna be able true. to trade, and it's gonna be a little bit easier. Someone's gonna find it, and not know, and they're gonna get rid of it. They're gonna be like, oh, this <laughs> kind of cool. oh, yeah, I'm gonna be on day one in the bazaar, going like, okay, Nubis, what do you have for me? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, uh, you know, like uh, Orion Sai for a thousand gold. Nice. <laughs> yeah. No one's gonna be level seventy six first day. Hey, crazy. I will. <laughs> Come on. I don't think level so. Level seventy. You remember One day, seventy-six. Their EXP is gonna change. Remember? Yeah, but I right. think they wanted to. They wanted to. They want the XP to like ramp up after. I think they want people to get like to level seventy-five ish, and then it, like Diablo too. You know where it was very easy to get to eighty, but from eighty to hundred it was like crazy, right? Uh, I don't think it's gonna be like a. Uh, I mean, we have no idea what they're gonna do, but I assume it's gonna, it's not gonna be like a. Like a normal curve, it's gonna be more like a super. Like the last twenty levels are just gonna be very hard. I hope yeah. so. I'd I'd be really disappointed if there were some you know level eighty plus characters on the very first day. It's like, you know, end game's already been reached day one. That's too easy in my opinion. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like. But wow. again, yeah, yeah, we'll see. I, I like slow progression personally. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm just it's saying why like... you keep playing. For version 1.0, I'd like it to be slow. Once they had done a couple of seasons, yeah, sure, start speeding it up, you know? Yeah. But at 1.0, it'd be really... I feel like it'd be kind of dumb if everyone was getting towards the max endgame on the first 24 uh, hours. Yeah, yeah let, let Fall level a bit, and in 3 hours, it's going to be... In, in 30 minutes, it's going to be doing monoliths. <laughs> so, <laughs> that guy is crazy farming. He's so fast. Yeah, that's, um, that's where it's at, though. Yeah. Uh, do you do you think, by the way, this is a bit off topic, but do you think we're gonna be able to do monolith before we finish campaign on release game? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think they're yeah, pretty think adamant we... about that already. They they weren't gonna take that away. Okay, that's interesting. One one thing that I think might change a little bit is I think they might rework the first few chapters, so it might take a little yeah. longer to get to the end time. They might change the map yeah. a little. But I think that a lot of people complained how like in in poe you back when it had you know only the four acts you had to go yeah. through all of them twice before you got to the maps so like yeah. people hated having to do you know replay the same story a second time just in a slightly mm -hmm. harder difficulty and so here they're like we want to give them the option you can either do the campaign or you can just do end game like it's going to be your I, think, I think it also has to do with the the quality of the campaign because for example again in diablo 2 right like all you do is the campaign and people don't have They've been playing the same campaign 20 years and they love it, right? So, uh, I don't know, I, won I wonder what they're going to choose. Because I feel like if you if you can get to like Monolith and Arena like so early, kind of, or to... Maybe you can get to Monolith and Arena, but you can't get to the, some of the other game modes, right? Because, I, because uh, again, we still don't know the other game modes, so who, I don't know, who, who knows? But I, I, hope, I hope the campaign has value and it doesn't feel like something that... Oh shit! I have to do this again. You know, because eh. I kind of like leveling the campaign. I don't, I don't dislike it. But um... I, st I'm still under the impression the campaign is going to change a lot before re release. Really? I think so. Well, well, not in terms of like the story, but in terms of uh -huh. what's actually happening. I think that, the the uh, actual gameplay. You mean? Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know how they're going to do it, but I feel like they're going to make it a lot more interesting. I think things like the Eternity Cache and things like that, where uh -huh. you can find chests, find, you know, Yeah, during campaign, things. right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of that's going to come in there, and all of a sudden you're going to... So wanna... every time you play the campaign, it's going to be different, right? Because you can find this, like, random uh, endgame kind of systems implemented in the campaign, right? Yeah, you're going to be looking for things... Because the way I believe the Eternity Cache worked was you put items in there, and then you come back later in the campaign yeah. and you would they would be more powerful or, or whatever yeah they would like happen. evolve yeah, yeah and then 
I, I don't know how lost memories are going to work, but I feel like you'd be finding those, so you're going to want to explore maps to find, you know, the, the fragment shards of, of however those work into yeah. the game. Dude, dude, that one is the one that I'm more excited about, the lost memories thing, like with the description that have on the website, and, you know, you kill the dude who uses poisons, and then you can use poisons. I, was I wonder to... if... The... Okay. I wonder how the, how it's gonna work. Uh, if it's gonna be like some sort of like en enchantments for your gear, you know, like an extra idle system, an you know, so you can, yeah, like you know, you have your helmet, and next to the helmet, you can have like a little relic and are inter like another layer of gearing, you know. I'm um, trying to remember uh, well, back when I first started streaming, it was back in like mm -hmm. November of last year, almost a year yeah. ago. There was a dev that came in, and we talked about last memories, and I don't remember if it was Arts or someone else, but uh -huh. it got it got brought up, and they were trying to explain to me how they were going to work, and I'm assuming this is how they were implemented at, at that time, uh -huh. so it's probably changed. But they were saying that you would you would go and kill a boss, you would target farm, it was yeah. it was going to be some head hunting, and you would find you would find these lost memories, and you'd have to collect them, you'd have to get the whole yeah. thing put together, and it would give you a skill. And I yeah. believe the skill was something that you could put on either a piece of gear or it was going to be what you would put on a legendary. And I'm assuming that's how, like, sockets I like work. That. Like, it was going to be yeah. a, a gym that gave you an active skill yeah, yeah, yeah. that you could put on an item. And that, so that's, that's how they were that's basically working. kind of like what I, what, what, what I was saying, right? That's kind of like what I was saying. Like, you yeah. get, like, this material that you can combine with your gear to make it more powerful or get, like, an effect or get, like, a, like an... Like maybe it's a trigger effect, maybe it's a passive, maybe it's just like stat buffs, right? Maybe it could be anything, right? From 10% movement speed to now you have 100% increased poison chance. Like, who knows? Yeah, the, the way that uh, they, they worded it was it was going to be more like an active skill. But it could be anything. Okay. I'm assuming it could be, you know, maybe there's just buffs or, or whatever. But the way they worded it as an active skill, it was going to be it was going to be something that could give you skills that you couldn't normally otherwise have in the game. I don't so, know if I like that, actually. Uh, what do you think about that? It's, it's a bit off topic, but cause I, I think if, I, if can you get every skill? Well, we'll see, right? But if you can get all this, these skills and these skills are good, basically every character is going to be using those skills regardless, right? You, I don't know, you you run in that danger where every build is just using this, regardless of class, regardless of you just like try to get these OP skills. I, I, I guess it would really come down to what kind of skills they are, like, because you know they're not going to be specialized skills. They're not going to be ones you level mm -hmm. up. But are they going to be skills like that have cooldowns, like you know, ten percent? Maybe chance. something like lining sparks. You know, like there are skills that proc, so they're actually skills. You know, but they're not actually skills you put on your bar, kind of thing. You yeah, know, and, and you try and find ones that synergize with your build. Yeah, exactly. Like, like lining sparks. You know, for the for the sork or. Um, Maybe maybe they give you something like aspect of the shark, you know, or something like that, which is ca technically kind of like a skill, right? It's like an effect, but uh, yeah, if maybe it's something like that. If it's implemented in that way, I feel like it'll be perfectly fine. But if it's like I I, I agree, I agree. If it's something like you find this one and it gives you the ability to teleport as as a sentinel, yeah, I don't like that. Uh, that I don't that like gets that. a little like it's a little. Everyone's yeah, that gets an enigma territory, and then, then every build is the same. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's gonna want transplant so they can get mana back. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want it to affect your bar. I just want it to make your skills better, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I, I would like it to be something that either buffs you, gives you some sort of effect, or has some really sweet effect that, like, even if it's just cosmetically, like you got this skill yeah. and everyone knows that you did this challenge. Yeah, you killed this badass boss. Yeah, yeah. So now you have this shield that surrounds you like at all times, or or a white light yeah. that, that glows. Yeah, as long as it's not wings, we're we're good. Too. Yeah, I'd, I'd be okay without those. It, I'm it, not a fan cool of Winks. It'd be pretty cool if, even if it was just passive effects, like you get plus 10 strength for having this one active. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what I would like to see. So, so it's like an Idols 2.0. Idols, but more strength, you know, kind of like for yeah. end game. An Idol slash like, I don't know if you press if you press K on your, you know, for the cosmetic panel. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I imagine it. Do you see how, for example, the helmet has like helmet augments and the weapon has uh, weapon augments? Uh, I assume these are cosmetic, right? Because it's a cosmetic page. But I imagine it to be something like this. But instead of putting like a cosmetic augment, you would put like the relic, you know, and it would be like a bonus to your weapon or whatever. Uh, I imagine the system would be something like this. Like, uh, that's, that's what I imagine, but who, who the fuck knows? Yeah, it's very oh, likely. 
It'd be pretty cool. We'll see. Yeah. Okay, what, what skill are we on? Shield throw? Smile? Shield throw. Yeah, one of one of the best one of the best skills in the game. I, I like shield throw. Yeah. There's something that, like it's the opposite of hammer throw for me. Even though they're both throwing yeah. attacks, there's something about shield throw that's just like it, it makes you fall in love with it. It's I and I think it's, it's what we talked about, right? The fact that you actually control who you're hitting, when you're hitting it, right? Like it, it just feels it's so responsive. I think it feels good to kite with. Like all the passive tree fields really nice. Like every point is nice. Like you get the, the armor on ricochet. I, I one thing I don't like, by the way, about shield throw is the fact that you need so, like you need so many points to get it to not have a cooldown. Like <laughs> Yeah, that, that is uh, the worst part. I think I think the no cooldown it should be just the base, honestly. Right? Like base base shield throw should have no, like no cooldown. Like I, you have to invest so many points to get rid of the cooldown, Here's... and it doesn't add any difficulty or anything. Like while leveling, it's just annoying. Yeah, they they went two two ways with it. So they gave it a mana cost instead of making it free, which is fine. But then they gave it yeah. a cooldown on top of that. So like hammer throw, ha you, you like got to choose one or the other. You either make it a mana cost or you give it a cooldown. Hammer throw yeah. got a mana cost, no cooldown. That makes it great. You know, you cast it when you got mana, you run out. Yeah, you exactly. Got you and then, if you wanna if you wanna invest onto having it no mana cost with the polish it still, you do, and it's great, right? So it has no cooldown, but it costs mana, and then you put the points and you keep the no cooldown while having no mana, and then you can put the you know the different points on whatever you want the skill to be. Yeah, and and hammer throw nailed that, but shield throw, you know they they double you know FD over. They're like, oh, we're gonna make it cost mana, and then we're gonna make it to where you can't use it as your main skill because it's got a cooldown. So you gotta like. Use something yeah, it's just well. and it's just annoying because basically you put the skill on your bar, you don't use it for six levels, right? Pretty much, and when you get the six points, then you start using it. <laughs> like, yeah. like, so it's, then, it doesn't really make the skill like you just level with that different skill, and when when you finally got your six points on shield throw, so it has no cooldown, then you start using it, right? After that, like, it's just garbage. I feel so, and after that, it feels like so good. So why even have those six points? When no one's even playing with the skill while they're leveling it, right? At least, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I, it should have. The cooldown should go away, um, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I haven't seen anybody do a shield throw build that didn't have those those six points. Yeah, exactly. In there. It, it was like those those skills are mandatory for the skill to work. So they, if, if any point that feels like that should be implemented in the core skill, in my opinion. If you need points, if you need six points to make a skill work. Right, mechanically, just work. Then that that those points will probably be part of the base skill, in my opinion, because uh, it just does. Um, everything else should be just personalizing the skill that already works, not making it work. Yeah, yeah. Those those three nodes are the ones that I just don't like. I don't like that it halves your ricochets. I don't like that it reduces yeah. your size, your hit damage. Like, no, it should just all go away. The skill yeah. should cost mana. But it should have no cooldown to begin with, and then you can put into a mana efficiency or mana cost reduction. Yeah, that, that would be the only option. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe four points or five points would still be mandatory down there, but it was just yeah, yeah. I agree, cost. I agree. But that that makes sense, right? The skill costs mana, and hey, do you want to pay mana for it, or you want to pay you know that that make, I I'm fine with paying five points for the for the mana cost, right? And again, it would give you a sense of progression because you're when you're at like a level ten, right, and you're using shield throw or level twenty or whatever you are. Right, and you're okay. You use shield throw a few times, and then you're out of mana. So you kind of like be careful how much you use it. But then, as 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 ma when you're leveling your skill, you're getting your mana, your your mana pool higher, your mana cost lower, and eventually you just forget about mana. Right? I think that's the the path that you should have. Uh, I think we talked about this already, but uh, yeah, and and it gives you that option. It again. Yeah, and it gives you that option to like really try and synergize it with other things. So like. Yeah. You know, with hammer throw, you're trying to get like negative mana cost on your on your rings or or on uh, yeah. on your uh, scepter or whatever you're using for your weapon. Yeah, yeah. But on this, it's like I'm I already mandatory have to put all the points in that mana cost, so I don't need that on rings. Like, there's no other way to build it. You just you got to put the points in. It's over. There was no thinking yeah. about it. It was just you could close your eyes and you have to do it that way. Yeah. You know, and if if they got rid of that cooldown and all, you know, you had that choice. Now it's like, you know, I could take those points, or I can put into damage and I can give up two prefix slots on my rings to to reduce the mana there instead. 
Yeah. Like, it gives you options, and everyone knows that the more options you have, the funner the game is, because it lets you try new yeah, shit. Yeah, I agree. But, yeah. Yeah. Like we said, no, it's no fun to have the mandatory things you have to take. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's... Besides that, what is one thing that you would want to add to Shield Throw, or one thing you'd want to take away, or both? Um... I think I would like to get... Uh... I think the crit, op like the hit damage version of shield throw, needs a bit of love in my opinion. Um, like all the crit stuff, right? Like the critical multiplier per hundred percent block effectiveness. If you have like two thousand, right? What you're getting like twenty percent like crit multipliers, like, eh. and you're getting one percent crit per you know base per point. I think that could be that could be a two percent per point, you know, because yeah. uh, basically. There's no, no one's going hit damage, um, crit, uh, because it's just it's way better to just go the lava burst option, right? So I would like to see the hit option a bit more, um, well, be more, um, be better, basically. Yeah, I agree. I think it needs a more hit damage version. Like there are, you know, there are ways to build it where it does a decent hit damage, especially mm -hmm. since you can get to a point with like smite and time reversal where you're casting it so fast. But I feel like yeah, the spell yeah. damage with it is always better because since weapons don't affect throwing speed and you can build into yeah, it, exactly. it's so much better just to put on like a two-handed staff and go go fire it. Yeah, that's it. what I did. That's what I do with mine. I just go two-handed staff. But I, I that's the thing. I don't scale hammer throw. I scale lava burst and smite. Right and that's how I'm doing my damage. Uh, it's not actually Smite doing the damage. So, uh, which is actually uh, this this that you mentioned is actually interesting because right now throwing attacks don't scale with throwing a, uh, with weapon attack speed because we don't have throwing attacks weapons, right? Yep. But I wonder when we get like bows, javelins, whatever we're getting, right? I wonder if the Sentinel is gonna get, you know, a weapon that actually scales with throwing because obviously when they release the archer, right? When they release bows. Oh, I mean, I, 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 bows are gonna affect your throwing attacks for sure, right? For, for so, uh, for the for the rogue. So I wonder if some of the mechanics that get introduced with the rogue, and how weapon uh, bows and stuff interact with throwing attacks. I wonder. I wonder if uh, if shield throw is gonna you're gonna be able to run like a bow or some shit, right? To actually make shield throw like skill with weapon. Who knows? Because that that would make sense, right? It's a it's a it's a shield throw attack. It's a shield. Uh, it's a throwing attack, like yeah, all the bow attacks. So, yeah, it's gonna be really curious when that all gets implemented. What what route they go with that? But that does bring up the one thing that I hate about shield throw. Mm -hmm. I honestly think that shield throw should require a shield. <laughs> it makes uh -huh. no sense that you have a two handed staff and yet you're throwing a shield. I you actually know. agree. I actually agree. Yeah. Uh, I actually agree. Yeah, you look at Serpent Strike and like you're required to you know use a pull arm with that. Yeah, the animation. Yeah. How do you how do you throw a shield and you're not even equipped with one? Like you got two hands yeah. on a staff and you're throwing a shield. I don't get yeah. it. And I, I understand yeah, I why agree. it's I, agree. I understand why it's not like that right now because nobody would be able to use it. I mean you yeah <laughs> you would but you'd you'd have to have the shield and it would the damage would suck or you'd be trying to like use a wand, you know as a sentinel. yeah yeah that's but, what I tried that before yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if when throwing items come into the game that there's something for the shield throw or for hammer throw. Like yeah, maybe like have, a, you have a... Yeah. I, I have maybe a you can... You like, can yeah, I don't know. We'll as, see. as they add in more skills in those item types or weapon types, I feel like so, some skills are going to start being more limited to like weapon types. Yeah. Kind of like, I feel like, you know, it's funny because they said in the beginning how they weren't going to do that. They're not going to limit, you know, things to be restrictive like that. They don't want to make yeah. it to where, like, tanks can't have stabs equipped and stuff. But it's yeah. funny that their items now, all the the chess pieces and the helms, are all class-specific. Yeah. They're starting to actually yeah. start to break it up. And I have a feeling they're yeah, going to break I, it I up mean, with weapons. I, I think for the armors, it's f I, I was, that's what I said when, I, when we got that update. I said, I think this is fine if it's only for certain pieces. Like, if it's only helmet and it's only chest, I'm fine with it. And everything else in, is interchangeable. I think it's the right amount of personalization without making it smart loot kind of thing, where you know every class has to use the same, you know every class has its own bases. I, I don't like that, but I think if it's just for chess piece, I'm fine with it, right? Um, 
but I, I wouldn't like to see like weapon based classes or I, I I like that any any class can wear anything but the the helmets on the chest. I think that's the perfect balance. I don't want more of unique unique uh, stuff. Maybe some uniques, maybe some legendaries could be like you know very specific or something. But I wouldn't like base items to be specific yeah. for the reasons you're saying. Pretty much, like I think it it just like makes it less less options. Yeah, I agree. But at the same time, I, I agree with you that they should take just because you can do something. It does like I, I still want the game to make sense, right? Like uh, having shield throw with a guy that doesn't have a shield and he's just wearing a two hand stuff. It just like looks a bit silly, even though if it's good, right? So yeah, and it's it's the same thing with shield rush. Like you know, you should yeah. probably have a shield with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean you have to unless you take the point, right? You have to use a Dude. shield on shield rush. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like I said, oh yeah, it does say require shield. Okay, shield rush has got it. Like I said, I've never played it. And and you can put a point that makes it not require it. So it's not a shield rush anymore. It's like a charge. That makes sense to me, right? Yeah. Uh, they could even add something like that in shield throw, where if you built into it, you no longer have to. Maybe it's called manifest yeah. shield. You know, where you yeah you know, yeah you like make a magic it. shield and you throw it right yeah. yeah it increases the mana cost or something something that yeah, goes yeah, along yeah. with it to make sense but yeah um, I I feel you well uh, do uh, we according smite I guess yeah, do we dare do we dare injure smite's brokenness uh, smite uh smite is uh, pretty fucking good isn't it. <laughs> Imagine First of much... all, three mana cost. Okay. <laughs> Imagine how much better it'll be when, when it when it's fixed and it applies ailments on hit. Yeah. 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 I, are... I, I think I I like it though. I think Smite has also a few options that are interesting. Because uh, obviously uh, you can use it how I'm using it on my vengeance build with the teleport, and I'm just using it for uh, attack speed and stuff. But uh, you can also use like the crit version, right? With convic, uh, what is it? The atonement, whatever that gives you crit. You can go, you can go like the more the sacrifice path where you get a shit ton of damage, but it takes away HP. I did that with my Void Knight with anomaly, and it was really really fun because you have so much life still with anomaly. Uh, but, but yeah, it's pretty it's pretty strong. Obviously, I I I, I do like Smite though, and I wish we could make like melee smiters. By the way. Uh, you know, like uh, imagine if you could if you could proc smite just with uh, your just like melee yeah. hits somehow, yeah. So you're like like in smite, like in Diablo two basically, where you have the smite there. Well, you technically um, can, you just won't proc it as often. Yeah, but I mean, you need what you need the axe throw or whatever, right? Yeah. So you'll have. Yeah, that. it's a bit. Uh, I'm talking like a proper melee way to proc it, you know. Yeah, and those uh, maybe those idols will come. It'd be pretty cool. It changes no, it up. Maybe quite just a bit. like uh, add it on the tree, right? Now smite, uh, you know, like smite now procs on melee hits or so. Like if you're, you know, or, so the idols like get transformed to melee hits instead. That would be pretty fucking sick. You know, like you're hitting stuff and smite is right. Like imagine vengeance with smite like that. It would be so cool. That would be pretty know. sick. I, I like the ability. I like how it looks. I like what it does. I think the tree is pretty cool like some of the uh, you they ignite i think the ignite pa part obviously is not kind of like working as intended right the elements i've never tried the fisher but i think it's kind of cool that you have that option right and i've never tried the lining anyway uh, but everything else i really like how have you so. not tried the lightning it's like the most beautiful lightning in the game really i have i mean i've seen it on your videos but i've never tried it oh, it's it's so satisfying yeah, it looks like a, like a nice landing from the air, from the sky. It's better than the landing from Shaman. Yeah, it's a very thick lightning. Yeah, so yeah. It, it just looks potent. It looks like Zeus is uh, hitting your your face. Yes, it's it's sweet. And the best part is, if you do it with like hammer throw procs, it's literally mm -hmm. like like you are Thor. Like you're throwing your hammer and you're yeah. causing lightning strikes. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm I'm overly happy. With the skill itself, but I, I feel like it needs a retunement. I mean, I feel like 50% attack speed too powerful. 
that's just I mean, yeah. cast speed, attack speed, and throwing speed, a 50% boost, that almost makes it a mandatory thing. And I don't know if you're in the forums, yeah. but, like, I got in an argument, well, not quite argument, but me and me and Yama were going back and forth in the forums about how uh -huh. he was he was kind of saying that it, it's not, you know, one of the better skills for, for uh, well, the original post was some guy asking, you know, what's the best skills for getting the most hits per second? And I was yeah. listing off for the Sentinel. You know, vengeance yeah. plus plus smite or plus time reversal. Yeah. Like anything with smite is gonna give you a lot more hits per second. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then you know, Yama came and said, "Ah, well, the damage sucks with that. It doesn't apply ailments on hits, and it doesn't do this." It's like, but you don't need that. Like, you just need the one note. Fifty percent increase the attack speed means that vengeance. Or yeah, I mean, you using. get sm you get smite, yeah. so shield throw applies more hits, not because smite applies hits. Yeah. Right. You, you go 50 like, even if a, even if a smite is not applying it, the fact that you're attacking 50% faster, it means you're gonna be applying. Well, you're gonna ricochet faster. You're gonna apply lava burst faster. If you have f future strike, future strike's gonna apply faster because I, I, you would go that way if you go for if you wanna go for ailments anyway, right? Um, yeah. I did that with my shield with my boy and my shield throw, and it's fucking crazy. Like you 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 hit like the dummy right for like four seconds. You stop attacking. And there's shit going on for four seconds with all the echoes and all the repetitions and all the. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's know, pretty it like, sick. It, the procs keep going. It's kind of crazy. How how would you nerf it? How much would you nerf it? Like half? Like. Uh, I'd go. Like I'd go thirty-five percent. Yeah, I would. 35? I would do. I would do seven percent increase per point. For five points. Okay, so thirty-five in total. Yeah, that that sounds good to me. Yeah. Um. I, yeah, I love the teleport. Good. The teleport's awesome. I love um, the teleport. I agree. I don't feel... I The one thing I hate the most about it, I don't feel that it should need a target to be used. Um, mm, uh. it's, it's questionable with the teleport because then it becomes just a movement skill. You know? Yeah. It's, it's kind I of feel broken. you, yeah. But at the same time, I don't like that you can't proc it to give yourself attack speed before you run into the boss. Yeah, I know what or... you mean. Uh, maybe you should have you should have may maybe you should have more options. Maybe you you should be able to target yourself. You know. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Or, or be like able to target. If you could just like teleport. Uh, something like that. Yeah, or or be able to target allies so you can hit your ring of shields with. It. Yeah, exactly. Or, or something. something... Like, I, I agree. I agree. Maybe that that that's what it needs. Because I, I agree, you would like to like use it before the wave spawns or before you get into mon or whatever, just so you enter with the buff, right? Yeah, and uh, it's it's kind of like lunch. Like I really hate that that teleport doesn't need to target a mob. Transplant doesn't yeah. need to target a mob. Primalist leap does not need to target a mob. But then you get lunch and you have to target. You get smite, yeah. you have to target. Like Sentinel gets really screwed over with the ability to not like move with its. That's why I skill. use volatile reversal pretty much. That's. It's still restrictive because you sometimes you have no idea where you're gonna go. Like, you're, am I gonna oh, land on well, that pole? Oh that, well, that's, that's part of the skill, right? I, I think like you learn where you wanna go. Like you gotta keep counting the four seconds in your head. Yeah, and then if, even if you get the the location right, are you gonna have mana when you do it? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, yeah. I use the I use the the um, volatile reversal without any of the mana stuff. So you're you're gonna have the same mana you had pretty much. Yeah, we'll, when we get to that skill, we'll, we'll dive into the how yeah. the whole using it with the least yeah. amount of cooldowns the best. But yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, the other thing that I I don't like with uh, with smite is I I won't say it's healing, but I feel like it's it's top left where they really try to do this cleanse chance and this and this other stuff. Yeah, I'm using that. Do you use that part? I I hate yeah, the. Yeah, I used the twenty five percent. I, I hate the out of mana cost. The, I feel like there's uh, no I don't use that skill. one. But, uh, or or just how, how do I explain it? Hammer throw has the same thing. All these nodes that add in a zero mana cost, like being able to use something when you're out of mana, but it cancels yeah, uh, out everything that it does. It's the most pointless node. Yeah, I would <laughs> never use that. First of all, if you're out of mana, your build is probably not working as intended because you should be trying to stay like at least at half mana when you're using your full rotation, right? Yeah. So it's like I, I would never use those points. I agree. I, I don't know what they were thinking with those points. Maybe like, they're thinking, oh, maybe if you're like in the, you know, in the battle and you are out of mind. I mean, but again, these points are also before. The, these points existed. These zero mana cost points existed before Sentinel had the mana sustain, right? So yeah. and I'm sure that's it feels it like these these points are just like relics from the past. They feel that they should just be completely changed now that 
Sentinel has sustain, right? So yeah, I'm sure back in the day they were like, ah, oh, we can't ever have mana. We're just gonna add a add a mana cost yeah, to, exactly. to solve it for now. Yeah, exactly. And I've noticed that they have that on a lot of stuff. I think Judgment has it. Um, yeah. I, I think Judgment has. It. I might be thinking of of Edor's blessing, you know, for healing out of mana. But yeah. there's, there's a few of them that have. I know Hammer Throw has it. There's things like that. Um, but as for the last thing, the Fishers. I feel like the Fishers on this uh, are just not worth the mana cost. Um, the Lightning and the Shock and all that. I, I really love that side of the tree. But for the Fishers, great idea. You know, it's really cool that you know you can have this this smite, this lightning or, or fire mm -hmm. come down from the sky and cause the ground to be on fire. Yeah. But there's just something about it. Like, I don't I don't know if its damage is just weak, but it's just useless. Like, no matter how I've tried it, I've even I've put in all the points down there, maxed everything with it, yeah. out, and it's still just like garbage. Does it hit the Fisher? Yeah, it has hit damage. That that's the weird I don't thing. Know. But I, I, I so, almost I, I think that's part of the thing with the elements being broken. I don't yeah, think exactly. They, they apply the elements that you have on gear and passives, and maybe once that's, that's what fixed, I'm saying. It'll be better. Maybe when they fix that fissure with Hafiz, you could just go full Alman Smite with shield, right? And maybe then it would Hafiz use because it's basically another another way to proc your your elements. Yeah. But that, obviously, till they till they fix that, well, <laughs> that'll be pretty sweet. One of, one also, of every time I use fissures and stuff, the FPS just go crazy, so I try to avoid all the fissure stuff. Yeah, any any colorful effects on the ground tends to tends to have some yeah. FPS effects. <laughs> even even your OP fan strategy can deal with it, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I have anything else with Smite. I, I know there's a build uh -huh. with it that I haven't tried yet, but. I wonder, I'm waiting to see if someone can make the smite judgment combination work. You know how with judgment you can cast like smite in front of you or whatever? Like maybe that's the way to make it melee. Oh, uh, yeah, I know what you're You get the, uh, when you use judgment, you can have it cast smite automatically three times. Yeah, the, exactly. The problem yeah. with that, and that's another reason why I don't like that you have to have a target, is it won't cast it at the same target. So, oh, it so was... it can't hit the same guy with six. Nope, you can only get it'll only do. Yeah, one. that's that's and that's it trash. Really sucked, because for single target. I, I think all the train. shotgun stuff. Like, I don't know why they care so much about shotgunning. By the way, like you know how like when you're you have like the, you know all these projectiles and you can't like, if you are hitting a boss and the three ham, you know if you're throwing like three hammers at a time, right? With the, without the orbiting, uh, you should just be able to hit them with the three hammers. Like I don't I don't see what they're the the shotgunning. I don't see the problem. Like, I, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I feel like hungering souls, ice thorns, all of them. Exactly, they, they should, should just it. shotgun. Yeah, I agree. And You're there's... positioning yourself closer to shotgun, so you shoot shotgun. Yeah, if there's only one mob, like I don't. Why, why would I waste twenty twenty nine of my hungering souls? They should all. Hit yeah, exactly. Them. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the, it almost makes it. Uh, especially because th these skills don't even do that much damage. It's not like they don't need it. It's not like they, they would actually maybe be useful if you could shotgun with them. So. Yeah, it, they set it up to where it's almost pointless to ever go extra projectiles. Because the only yeah. time that it ever does good is when there's, you know, a mob, you know, a whole bunch of trash mobs. Yeah. But then they're so and easy you don't to even kill. Need them. Yeah, you don't yeah. need them because just the one's going to kill. You're going to one shot them anyway. Yeah. What do you got left to smite? You uh, you done with it? Yeah, uh, yeah. I like smite. I think it's in a good place. I, I well, we already mentioned this, but I think the idol, the mana on smite uh, back should should come back, uh, regardless if it's manual cast or automatic cast. That's my opinion, because it would open a lot of, because uh, just because I would love to be to use throwing attack builds without. And without having to worry about mana, you know, if I want to cast orb, if I want to cast echoes, maybe, you know, like if I want to cast any any skill that costs mana, like I feel like I should be able to. I agree uh, with you on on smite for that one, and the reason I agree with you on that is because smite can't just hit the air like vengeance can. You can't just hit air exactly and do it. Yeah. It's only gonna work when there's actual mobs around, and because of yeah. that limitation, I feel like smite on proc should still give its mana. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Just because, what are you gonna if you have a very mana intensive build on shield throw? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna put vengeance on your bar so you vengeance the air? Like it just 
it's just silly, honestly. Like, it just looks silly. I, so, I have a feeling that'll change. I have a feeling they're going to change it to on hit, and I'm surprised that's actually yeah. not there to begin with. But yeah. Well, who right. knows? Maybe if we get mana, mana still idols and all that, maybe that changes everything, right? Like, or mana still affixes. Like, we don't we don't know if those are going to be a thing or not. Like. Uh, but at the moment they're not, but you never know, right? What they're gonna add, so we'll see. Yeah, uh, well, we will see. Okay, volatile reversal, my friend. Oh god, are we there already? Yep. Here's here's the one thing I want to say about volatile reversal right off the bat. Okay. When you first look at it, it's so small. You're just like ah, the tree. This, yeah, you're just like this skill. There's nothing to it. It's, Looks pretty sick though. Uh, yeah, it's got a good shape to it. Yeah. But yeah. you look at it and you go, it's so small. There's like barely any notes. But there's so much shit you can do with it. There's so yeah, many different yeah. ways to build it, and there's so many effects you can get out of it. You know, from mana. To I health love ball at reversal. Yeah, it's 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 a. It's my uh, favorite skill in the game right now, by far. Yeah, it's like that present at the Christmas tree. You know, everyone wants that big one because it's huge. Yeah. But Volatile is like that small one that's worth a lot. The small one that is the good one, yeah, yeah the expensive it's, one. It's the one. <laughs> it's the real one you want to search for. Yeah, it's got yeah. that gold bar inside of it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I love it, man. I love it. So I guess I think it's, I think it's original. I think it. Uh, what you said, you have many options. You know. Uh, I love, for example, that you can go the dodge option if you wanted to while on cooldown. I think it's really unique uh, for Sentinel, especially. I, I, I love, I love everything about it. I love the buffs that it gives you. I love that the buffs can stack. Uh, I just think it adds, an, again, a layer of skill on the player. You know, because obviously the teleporting around. If if you misplay with this ability, it can kill you, right? Because uh, if you're like fighting poison enemies or whatever, and you ball at a reversal into poison, well. Uh, you basically killed yourself, right? So, yep. um, I, I love the skill. I think it adds a layer of gameplay that is just like really, really cool. And yeah, I don't know. I just love Volatile Reversal. It's just very unique and very cool. Yep, I I agree with all of it. And, and I don't necessarily want to see any change either on this. I think the skill is like pretty much set. It's... Yep, I agree. No changes, and and we were talking earlier about how trees should kind of be rearranged in a in a fashion where you can have multiple paths to the same thing. Yeah, I, this is like the perfect example in my opinion. Yeah, Every, everything everything's close to everything, but you still have the same amount of options, right? But you don't need to go out of you don't need to go through the entire tree to get to one corner or the other. Like, for example, if you want to go to like volatile travel, right, which is like the the farthest you can get or if you're gonna go to face reality you only have to put three points together right two points on uh, i think that is so cool that you could you could get both extremes of the tree and still have like 10 points to use anywhere else if that's what you wanted to do and i think that's really cool yeah they, they really nailed it you know they didn't they didn't even have to link the far ends they just made it to where there were yeah. no far ends. Like it's all yeah. within two, three nodes to get to anywhere. Yeah, I, I love it, and it makes it also. I like it that it makes sense thematically, right? Because volatile reversal is like kind of like time travel mechanic, right? And they they like the skill tree mirrors. Uh, I just think it's it kind of it kind of like looks cool. Uh, it makes sense, like you know, it's the two sides of a coin almost. Uh, I think it's really cool. Yep, and there's and there's... it's a very good skill. So yeah. Yeah, good skill. Uh, it takes skill to use it. Uh, it takes yeah. some knowledge, you know. And there's a lot of ways to play it. But one one of the big talks I've seen in a lot of the Discord and on the forums recently is people saying that skill trees need more points, or or they need to have you know rearranged and whatnot. But basically, they were saying that a lot of skills, by the time you've got uh -huh. to 15 points in them, they're they're already done. You've already built what the skill is going to do. But Volatile Reversal is, is the one skill that I can name where uh -huh. once you've hit level 20 with it, you can take out one point and and like make the skill change. Like you can take one point yeah. out, of, out of enemy damage taken and put it you know on the opposite side for enemy damage over yeah, time yeah. taken. And it makes a difference. Like Yeah, it makes a difference. You keep the core build and you know if you're going maybe you're going spell damage with boy rift, maybe you just wanna apply time broth more. Like who the f like you can do so many things with it, right? Yeah, it's, without it's... Uh, without hurting the core ability, which is what we've been talking about today. I, I love volatile, and again, it's super original. Uh, 
Um, I, I, one thing that I don't know about bullet reversal, uh, I think it's too low on the tree for Void Knight. Like think... it feels to me, it feels it feels to me like bullet reversal feels more Void Knight to me than the Barring Orb. It, you know, like you can you can you if you're a Paladin or you're a Forge Guard, you can get to bullet reversal with only five points. Right, but you need fifteen to get to Orb. And to me, orb seems like that it should be more accessible than the reversal. If you know, you know, lower kind of like like volatile reversal is such a strong void knight kind of theme, and it just feels like the fact that you can just use it on all the other classes so easily without so, basically just investing five points in void knight. I I I, I don't know. I mean, I, it's fine for me because I'm using it on every skill, but I always feel like them. For example, in, in Paladin, if you want to get sigils, look at how many points you have to use, right? Uh, so if you're, a, if you're a Forge Guard and you want sigils, it kind of feels like an investment, right? Oh, like I'm going to invest like a few points here if I want to get sigils. Uh, same for Ring of Shields. Like Ring of Shields is so accessible. But Ring of Shields makes sense because it's... I don't know. But defensive That's skill? just like... Yeah. I just think Bolotel has too much of an identity to be so easy accessible, but I love it, so I, I I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> yeah, and and I agree with you. Um, I also think that it should be locked in the Void Knight. Um, oh, I think like, only Void Knight. Yeah, because you have you have Ravaging Stance up top, and that's not really even a Void, you know, a Void thing. Yeah. It, it does increase your Void damage, but it's. That's it. That's all it does. Now, I don't want time reversal or volatile reversal actually locked up there because I do use it on all the builds like you do. Like, it's great exactly. for, for Paladin throw builds. Yeah, and it's stuff. just too fun to be locked, I think. It would make other classes just sound fun, but maybe a bit more investment, you know? But if you really think about the Void Knight itself, it really probably should be locked for just that class. Uh, I think it will depend if. Because obviously, Void Knight is lacking skills, in my opinion, right? You have Anomaly. Ravaging stance is kind of garbage, but I think it needs something. It's, it needs something extra. I think something, or maybe just like a a racing strike needs like some loss or something, right? Um, but um, I don't know, because I do think anomaly is super fucking strong. So I really like anomaly also. But yeah, anomaly there, like... anomaly definitely has to stay up top. If you use that yeah, as a yeah. forge guard, it, it'd be dumb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Way too I agree. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I like where Volatile Reversal is right now, I, and I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it'll stay there, and I'm always going to use it on all of my classes for different things. Yeah, pretty but much. But as, as a time and as a Void skill, I mean, it really is a, a Void skill if you really look into it. Like, it's doing that the time rot, it's doing, you know, the damage over time and the damage mm -hmm. taken. It, it just feels like it's, a, it's, a, it's meant for the Void Knight. Yeah, I agree. But again, I don't really like playing Void Knight that much, so compared to the others, because I I think the Void Knight tree is just like I I I am so conflicted with Void Knight tree because I like a lot of the stuff, but for example, all the, the it feels to me like they want it to be like a melee class kind of right because they, you have all the melee attack speed, you have the echoes and all that right, but then I always find the echoes pretty useless when I'm playing melee, just because I mean if I'm playing vengeance and my vengeance is one shotting everything. What am I getting from the Echoes? I'm getting nothing. But then when I play Shield Throw and Smite, right, on Void Knight, you get so much value for, for the Echoes because you get like the what whatever 40% chance to Echo. So every like every every two Smites, you get one for free, pretty much, right? Yeah. Every three and, and it just it it ramps up your damage like crazy on shield throw attacks. But then you have nothing on the on the build. You have nothing on the tree that actually helps shield throw or like spell that much, because uh, so I don't know. It feels to me like I would love to see in Void Knight. I would love to see more uh, kind of like spell uh, stuff. You know, maybe a bit uh, and not so much like melee because every other class is melee anyway, right? So I don't know. Just like I always feel a bit conflicted when I look at my tree and I. I like, uh, it's good, uh, in my opinion, when I look at it, it's good for throwing attacks, right? But it's telling me that it's good for melee, but it's not. So I'm, like, super conflicted. 
The weird thing is, is Void Knight has more spells and throwing than it does does Malay. Yeah, exactly. It's only yeah. Malay skill is a racing strike. That's all you have. Yeah. That's meant for yeah, exactly. Void Knight. And when it echoes, it's it's nice because it's a very expensive skill and it does yeah, get damage. Yeah, I agree. But uh, I, I, the thing that I hate about the Void Knight is his his spells are not really spells. I, they're I mean, buffs. They're, yeah, they, they are spells, but they're not like go do damage. Damage. Like, you have yeah, Abyssal Echoes, buffs. but it's a buff. Devouring Orb. Yeah. You can set it's Devouring buff. Orb to do good damage, but it's also yeah. a buff. You're not yeah. like you're not casting it at the enemy, you're casting it to circle yourself and then it attacks yeah, yeah. every now and then. Like it needs I feel like it needs a skill or, or a spell, an actual void spell. Like I would almost say like void disintegrate. <laughs> but it, yeah. it needs it needs something. Um and I feel like this were, like a void smite would have been like the perfect thing to do. But there's just something about Smite not being able to cast very fast that I don't like. Yeah. But you can convert, you know, Smite into a Void, and I, I feel yeah, like that's Imagine that if, imagine if uh, a Racing Strike could cast Smite. Everything that gets hit, gets hit by Smite. How sick would that be? That would actually be really sick. If, if instead of Void Beams, it was Smite. Yeah, exactly. Would, you hit people with a Racing cool. Strike and boom! Lining from, you know, Void Smites from the air. That would be so sick. And you could, it would actually make sense to kind of like you know, like you would get benefit from like the crit multi from because you know, because a racing strike has base crit and smite has base crit on the tree. Uh, I don't know, I think it would be pretty sick. Man. That that would be really sick, actually. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to form post that. And maybe a racing strike could maybe if a racing strike get the melee spell attack, like how sick would that be, too? That, that so you could sick. actually skill it with spell damage also, since it's like this hybrid thingy. I don't know. That actually that actually brings up like two, kind of, I mean it's on topic, but it's different than seals. That brings up two interactions mm -hmm. that I really like in the game, and that are coming uh -huh. to the game, that I really want to see more of. So, like the, the first interaction, and I know a lot of people like this, is is skills that proc skills that proc skills that proc skills. Yeah. <laughs> it, it breaks the game for FPS. But it's yep. really cool to see what kind of chain you can get. Like, like my yeah, all-time yeah, favorite is is on the on the Sentinel class. I mean, you're able to take a melee attack, say Vengeance, and be defensive yeah. with it, and do hits with that, which will you know proc a chance for an axe to be thrown, which will then use your yeah. idols to cast Smite. When Smite yeah. comes down, it can you know it can shock the enemy and create a fissure, and give you yeah, attack yeah. speed. So you have like you have a chain of four things, that and happen. all of that can can hit future strike. <laughs> yeah, and all of that can do future strikes, which can do ailments. Yeah. Well, future strikes won't do yeah. ailments, but those hits can do ailments or future strikes, um, and debuffs and time rot, and you have you have a lot of layers there. And then you take a skill that they have coming, like you know, assemble abomination, something yeah. where it depends on other skills that you've chosen yeah i like that yeah. and it's going to turn that skill into you know it's not the it's not the skill tree itself that's going to benefit from it it's going to be what type of minions you chose like yeah. i think it would be really cool for a skill that you use like vengeance that's proccing things that depending on what it procs and what procced what certain things happen mm -hmm. so if you had yeah. If you had Vengeance proc Smite, it would proc like the fire version of Smite, or or if Vengeance was set up, um, uh, let's go back with that. Let's say you did Rive because there's a Void mm -hmm. type of Rive, yeah, or or even Shield Throw. You can turn Shield Throw into 100% Void. That automatically yeah. turns Smite into Void. You didn't need it anywhere else, but because Shield yeah. Throw was was Void and it procced a Void uh, Void Smite, you know, and they interacted that way, and so it was based on yeah. Void damage just from that. And then that could proc, you know, whatever it procced. But I, I really hope skills get interactions like that, where you really like synergize and have to think about what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty sick. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually super excited for the assemble abomination. I think it's gonna be. Yeah. Uh, what, what I thought was really cool was they've already talked about how anything that's minion will go into it. They didn't discuss, like, if you absorb. You know, other players. Allied uh, minions. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or, or like companions. if you like manifest armor or something can give you extra. So you could actually make a team come around it, right? Yeah. So everyone gets one minion to make like this huge abomination that has everything. Yeah, and you're gonna have to work yeah. as a team to like make make the best ones or make the combination. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm pretty. I'm excited if there's more skills like that, and I think there can be. Yeah. I I could easily see something like that coming for every minion build. Yeah.
like it would you know how fucking sweet it would be as a primalist to like have six wolves and then you know make like a big ass wolf <laughs> yeah you, you sacrifice him for the alpha yeah. <laughs> yeah i was thinking you make like a three-headed wolf or something like you know like the cerberus or something like that mythology thing that would even be sweet like that'd be really cool <laughs> Or if you had, you know, you mix and match and you had the raptor. Yeah, you make like a chimera, kind of like, you know, with bear, a bear head, like a wolf body, and like a scorpion tail, or something like a chimera, you know, like in Roman mythology, like a yeah. chimera. And then, that would be sick. Looking at a symbol of elimination, I'm really hoping that interaction of skills comes in. And I'm hoping that you can do that with skills themselves at some point, mm -hmm. for like non-minion builds. Like, you can say... Yeah. And they kind of have that interaction, like you have Death Seal, which can proc, you know, your hungering souls. But how cool yeah. would it be if if Death, like depending on how you skill or transplant souls, rib blood, right? Yeah, or transplant rib blood, you know, things like that. Depending on how you did the trees, it it proc'd a special effect from doing it that way. Yeah, some yeah. sort of other layer that came into it. Yeah. Oh, pretty sick. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what they do. They got enough people working on it. Their minds are going pretty mm -hmm. crazy right now. I can only imagine what their meetings are when they come up with these ideas. Like, how giggly yeah. they are. Yeah, the, the worst part is we're having all these discussions, right? And all these ideas. And maybe a lot of these things they already know, right? They, it's already planned. And we just like, we're just making these assumptions that and it's probably already there. It's already on their client or it's already like been completely like discarded or whatever. So. Well, I'm sure Ooh. that most of the skills we've talked about, they've already decided a lot of this. Or they yeah. have their own their own vision. Yeah, board. they already have their own take, yeah. But uh, I just love talking about the Lee. So. <laughs> yeah, it's always it's always fun that we can come back to this video later. Like, hey, they did exactly what we said. They copied yeah. us. So we were but messiahs, they were, yeah. They were working on it six months ago. <laughs> yeah. All, All right. right. Abyssal Echoes. Echoes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I love Echoes. What can I say? Uh, All right. One thing that I found stupid is the the pooling. I think the pooling is a bit stupid. Like the perma pool thing. Like the suck suck. Uh, that's that's a bit too stupid. I think. I like it. Yeah, but I, I mean, it is uh, it is dumb and uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> it takes away from like Warpath and its speciality with it. Um, and it's not super. I just useful. think it makes the combat so weird. Like, we're walking around carrying a fire golem. Like, I don't know. It's a bit it's, too much. It reminds me of a broken black hole. Like, I hate how it pulls. Yeah, exactly. And the first thing yeah. the mobs do is run away. And it's like, yeah. alright, well, I, I'm casting this every point six seconds, so you're coming right yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. Man. <laughs> it's kind uh, of a I CC. think, CC in general, you know, CC in general should be something that you time. And you get the effect, but it shouldn't be something that you can perma hold, like perma stun, perma freeze. Like I think those mechanics should have some sort of like DR or some counter, because I I would really dislike if we get to this meta where you just stack CC and mo mobs can't move, right? Kind of thing. I, I don't I don't like that that much. And I was thinking like if you played this, if you make like a support character, like a full tank, right? Yeah. And then you grab the egg and you just build around echoes, pulling everything all the time, and you just build full tank, right? Uh, in multiplayer, like, I mean, you just got nice. your sentinel guy grabbing everything while while the mages and the DPS guys just like blast you. You know, I don't know. It's just the, like if I imagine the combat combat without it, it feels more interesting and it feels more engaging. Like it, I think it kind of like dumps it down. But uh, CC, but whatever. Now I I like the pull on the other hand, but I don't like the uh -huh. way it's implemented. So for me, this okay. skill, the pull on it would be perfect. If you took the pull node, it disabled recast. Oh, okay, so it's like a uh, like you you cast it on demand. And... Yeah, it, it's a one time. Yeah, shot. I know what you mean. Yeah, I think that would be better for sure. Yeah. So it was kind of like it, you had to time it right. You had to be around enough of the mobs, and you'd pull. You'd be the you'd be the train puller. You'd be the kiter for people. You yeah. go into like a pack. I think that's fine. It. it would work like an, a taunt, like an aggro mechanic. I think that's fine. Or maybe if it didn't, because you know, right now when you pull them, you make them like do like a little jump, you know, so they like stop attacking. So they basically the mobs don't do anything. Maybe if it was like a pull, you know, like a like like a strength that pulls you to it, and not so much like a knock up, because right now it's like a knock up. Uh, maybe it would be better if you know while the enemies are getting pulled, they can actually move and attack and behave normally. 
uh, and do their animations and stuff. So you actually have your you're stuck in the pool with them, kind of thing. I uh, like I it, but at the same time, I feel like that's deadly. Could you imagine pulling them towards you as they're still attacking you? <laughs> well, you would uh, be able, you you're, would be able you're to the tank, them. bro. You're like you got a tank. Yeah, yeah. That's true. This is a tank build. Pray, pray, pray your DPS kills them fast enough. You know, that's kind of like the. That's why I think it will be more exciting. Because right now it's kind of you can just like walk around and they can't even touch you because they're getting knocked up every 0 0.5 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, that's probably why I like it. It feels abusive. Yeah. <laughs> But I do love the skill though. I love the skill. I love the how you can build it to stack, you know, the increased damage and stuff. I love the recast. And I love that I love that based on your attack speed and how much mana you can get from vengeance, right? You can be more aggressive with the mana cost, right? Like if you're if you have like only like 50% increased attack speed, well you can probably only get like like the 1.6 cooldown, right? Second cooldown or whatever. But if you have like 200 attack speed, you can probably cast it every 0 0.6 seconds, right? Um, and I, I really liked it because, for example, when I was building my Turbo Vengeance, I really felt like, oh, sweet, I got more attack speed on my gloves. That means I can take one point of the mana efficiency and put it on the cooldown. So I do a bit more damage, right? And I really like that, how you have to always like uh, get the right balance between mana cost, cooldown, and, uh, and your attack speed to get the mana back. Uh, I, I think it's really, and again, what we were talking about, I love how it, it synergizes with Vengeance, it synergizes with Volatile Reversal, and they just make each other, these skills make each other better, and I don't know, I, I think it's sick. I really like the, I really like how this works, and I really hope they don't touch it much, because I really, I really like how it works. Yeah, it, I think it's fine the way it's at. I mean, I, I would like the pool to disable the recast, but that's like the only yeah. change that I could see. And Yeah, that's the only change, I agree. Uh, the Abyssal form, to me, is a little, you know, I wouldn't Does say it broken. even work, Abyssal form? I, I don't know, because you don't change a form. You don't notice it. You don't see yeah. it. But yeah, I've no, also I heard that it's... I've, I've heard it's broken, and once you're in it, you can't leave it. <laughs> you know, I've, okay. I've, heard, I've heard some different things about it. I know the okay. buffs aren't super massive, especially like the mana region now, kind of pointless on it with, with Vengeance yeah. and all that. I, yeah. I, I think that would be cool if it changed. I would love... If maybe a, if there was a smaller chance of getting abyssal form, like there was a chance to get it on kill, not you do get it on kill, but yeah, it was yeah, yeah. it was like a reaper form where when you went into it, you got different skills for a few seconds. Oh, okay, like, like it changed you. Yeah. Or maybe like it could just be like infuse uh, at least some visual infused to you or something, right? Yeah, like it, you're su you're suddenly like this void infused, corrupted, you know, kind of like warrior. Yeah, and even even so if it's it like you go like, into the void for a few seconds, right? Yeah, and even if it wasn't new skills, maybe it just gives you a few buffs and changes the look of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever played yeah, Warcraft yeah. Three? Uh, yeah, yeah. There was uh, God, uh, what was his name? It's the warrior that has like the scythe, uh, or not the scythe, but uh, he has the blade, kind of like Zizina, where where he okay, spins circles and he he would morph into a bigger. Form. One of the heroes. Yeah, he was the purple guy. Um, God, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but. But he would he had like a circle attack and his main thing was that he would morph into this really powerful thing for like a minute and a half, have more life and attack. Mm. It was his special ability that he got at level six. Um it was called morph um, or some shit like that. But, was it the was it the Naga? See we uh, those are the those are the heroes, the Alchemist, the Beastmaster, the Dark Ranger, the Fire Lord, mm. the Brewmaster, the Pit Lord, and the Tinker. Nope, nope, no. Nope. It was the hero for, um, God. He 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 wasn't the dark. He was the dark elf. He or the the, night, the one the, the night elf. The 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 one that had like the the one that had like the the the, the swords, right? The the double yeah. edged swords. Yeah, they were like rounded swords. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He and was... he had like his his eyes. He had like a blind. He was blindfolded, right? Yes, that's the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he like that... he got the, like became bigger and was like he became like enraged, right? Yeah, he had that morph ability where yeah, yeah, he, exactly, he'd use yeah. it. It had a cooldown stuff, but it'd be really cool if that's kind of what this did. Morphed you into something that was a little bit like yeah. sweeter looking with some slight buffs for a few seconds. Yeah. Even if it was only for four seconds after you know, there's like a five percent chance on kill for four seconds, you are mm -hmm. like, you, you cosmetically morphed into this transformation. That'd yeah, be that would be pretty sweet. sick. Um, 
But yeah, other than that, there's not really many changes that I would do with Abyssal. I like the way it chains. I like the way that you can make it not chain and give it area. Um, yeah. I, and like you said, I like the way that you have all the throttles. You have the keys to everything about it. You can change the mana efficiency in a couple different areas, reduce the cooldown, or give it more recast. Like, you have the full control depending on how mana efficient you've made the rest of your build. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah, almost feel like they got the, the Void Knight down to, like, the skills for Void Knight in really good spots. It's just the Void Knight itself has something missing. I don't know. I think yeah. it's defense, but I'm not 100% sure what it is. I just think it needs. You need to feel that you're the damage dealer of the three, and right now it. I, that could be. It has enough buffs. It needs. It needs its damage dealing. Something other yeah, than erasing. Yeah, I think to be honest, it's just a racing strike, which we can go into if you want. A racing strike just next. sucks, <laughs> in my opinion. This sucks. Like, I, I don't know. Like I. It just doesn't do enough damage. Like, sure. I like that you can get a base crit. I like that you can get hit damage, but somehow it still doesn't do. Maybe it just needs better idols or like uh, something. Here's the thing. a racing strike can do good damage. I I did a build with it and we were hitting for like six to ten k. Um, yeah, but it's very slow and it costs like yes, that's, what, how much mana? You know, that's, like that's where forty it mana. I would call it the earthquake of the sentinel. It's. Yeah. It can do good damage, and it feels really potent when you, like... Because you can spam it. It feels good when you have, like... If you use Orion's Eye and you have a lot of mana, you can get, like, four or five casts of it. And when you have that four yeah, or five that... casts and three of them echo, that's when it feels really, really good. You're like... Damn, yeah, but the, the, the problem good. is the mana cost, right? You can do the same thing with Vengeance with zero cost and crit three times a second for, like, 7k. Correct. <laughs> and, then, and then you do have to do that right after you've spammed it eight times because you have to get your mana back. Yeah, exactly, because you need the mana. So it's just... I almost feel like Erasing Strike is one of those skills, since it's a melee skill, that should just not have a mana cost. Yeah, I agree. I was thinking the same. Like, why does it even cost mana? Like, Swipe is no mana. Like, Vengeance is no mana. Rife is no mana. Why is Erasing Strike cost mana? Like, I think it's uh, It should area... be like a spammable. But yeah, it, it should be spammable. And... Okay, if it, if it's if it has mana, why not make it ten mana? Why well, don't have like uh, something in the tree that makes it give mana back on echo or something? You know, you can introduce so many mechanics to make it more pleasant. Maybe if the skill echoes, right, you get your mana back or something. So every every few casts, you know, like if you have forty percent chance to echo, you're only gonna have to pay for one of them or something like that, right? So. It definitely needs some help. It just feels horrible just because the mana cost. And again, this is assuming you have Orient's Eye, you're like level 100, right? And imagine leveling with it. Poof. It's just like... Yeah, it's 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 rough. And it's... it's. Yeah. I think it's because the team for Last Epoch, there's, you know, the balancing people are different than the, the design people, which are different than the people yeah. like the skill trees. And there's so many different yeah. people working on it. There's like a, I think there's like just a little connection that's like misfiring somewhere, because you have things like earthquake, erasing, strike. Um, what's another one that's super expensive, but you just can't use it because it's too expensive. Uh, drain life now. <laughs> just drain life that bad. Um, and the drain life is 80 ma 80 mana cost now. If oh, you want Jesus. the the non-channeling. That, that's just ridiculous. And it used to be it used to be zero. <laughs> so yeah, so you have these things, and I feel like what they thought was, like like meteor storm or a meteor strike or whatever, yeah. thought, just meteor um, for sorcerer. Is you have this skill that costs a lot of mana because it's going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, but it doesn't. Like, no. Yeah. yeah, and then they it's forgot probably. to add the damage. <laughs> that's the listen. I one I, I feel like I would be completely fine if a racing strike like cost forty mana. But if it does 40 mana, it has to do 40 mana worth of damage, right? Like, uh, for for example, with Glacier, right? Like, first of all, you get your mana back because you're Sorcerer. You have Focus, so it doesn't feel that bad to spend mana, right? You're getting your you're getting worth on mana spent, right? So everything is benefits pretty much, and it's gonna be hitting if you go for the for the maximum damage build with the reverse hit and so on. Your your first hit is hitting for like it's hitting the dummy for like what like 60k right, yep. uh, and you're gonna be hitting stuff in arena for like between seven and 10k with basically perma 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 f spam. 
So I feel like for a, and it's a range that can hit across the screen and it's huge AOE. And it also has freeze and ward on kill and well, ward on hit and etc. Right. So in order for a racing strike to be comparable to something like that, right? It should ha it should like if I don't see like thirty k crits from a racing strike, why would I use it? Like like. If it's doing 10k crits, but I can just crit with vengeance for zero mana for even if it's half the damage, just DPS wise, it's just like why, why would I use it? I think the damage of these skills it needs to be just like super super buffed. I, I would love to use a racing strike and be like boom, you know, and you can just feel like you're you kill stuff. And it sounds like that when you listen to it. Yeah, game, yeah exactly. It's, it's when like... it's, it's it looks sick. I love the animation too, but and when it echoes and it's mayhem. But then you look at the numbers and are in the mana cost, and it's just not, not that great, right? Yeah. So, so if let's just say the devs listen to this, this is how I would fix it. Okay. So okay. you have you have a few nodes in it. The first node is directly above it, and it's called a tuned yeah. strike. You get mana, yeah, efficiency, mana efficiency, but it reduces the area. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Okay. Here's what you do to the skill. You increase the base damage of the skill massively. You make the mana cost. Yeah. You make the mana cost a little higher. You make it 80 mana, and you make the base damage about three to four times what it is right now. So it's just yeah. super, super potent, but it's a one shot, and then you're done. Yeah, for when you're leveling, I get you. Yeah. So then you go up here, and you have this mana efficiency. But instead of reduced area, it's it takes away hit damage. It should be hit damage, not area. So if you want to mm -hmm. make it to where you can cast it more, the hit damage goes it's down. It's going to do a bit less damage. Yeah, I feel you. And yeah. then on the left side, you have uh, what's called Rhythm of the Void. Um, almost directly to the left down one and it gives you 50% mana efficiency but it makes it no longer scale with attack speed uh, just get rid of the attacks like th yeah. that shouldn't be there that yeah. that totally makes it to where it's just you, you can't spam it anymore but now you have the mana to do so so like what yeah it's like shield throw it would be like like making shield throw cost no mana but the cooldown gets longer like what? Yeah. Uh, wh why do I want it to not cost mana if I can spam it? Yeah, yeah I, I just made it to where I can finally spam it, but now I can't because it takes too long. Yeah, exactly. That, that, sh yeah. that just needs to be gone. And then um, the other one they have is directly below it. They have one called a Foman Tactics, where you get another 50% mana efficiency, but it gives it a four second cooldown. <laughs> so yeah. you're telling me that my three options to actually make this mana cost be all right is either reduce the area to where it hits nothing, not be able to, you know, cast faster with attack speed, or give it all, just give it a four second cooldown, and literally it's a one shot um, that doesn't cost mana now, but doesn't do yeah. enough damage to be one shot. So, I think those are the three spots that they need to fix. They they need to make it yeah. way more base damage, but cost more. I mean, they could even make the cost 100 to begin with. I'd be okay with that if it did four times its current damage. And then you had to build yeah. into it with, with mana efficiency in several different areas. Now, I, I will say that it is possible to make this skill be pretty cheap. Um, if you put the full six points up top, yes, the area is quite a bit smaller. But if you get that 150% mana efficiency and you team that up with four void spells, or uh, um, actually it's not a void spell, so you can't even match those idols with it. Um, but you match that up with the 50% efficiency with no longer attack speed, you can actually get its cost down into the 20s, and it's not that bad. Um, but it's just the damage at that point and the fact that it casts slower is just not worth it in my opinion um, but yeah it's mana efficiency yeah. to damage that's, that's the only thing that needs to be fixed I like the void beams I like um, that you can get the void essences on it I like the options that it has you know for base chance for crit multiplier you can you know it's got ailment options it's got damage versus stunned enemies and um, and like void rifts and enemy damage taken things things that have really tied into like volatile reversal like, like yeah they, they've got that down it just it needs its mana versus damage problem fixed the ratios yeah, yeah. and the bouncing's bad I agree I agree but again the ma right now is definitely not I, I don't I, I like I'm looking at the skill right now with some points I put on it and it's costing me ninety mana and it's hitting for lo it's hitting like I'm I'm hitting for 1.4 in the dummy, you know when yeah. that's that's weak for 90 mana when my ben my vengeance is hitting for 400 so it's like so yeah, it's uh, free. three it's vengeances actually, the vengeance is you know. giving you mana <laughs> yeah exactly and I all I gotta do is hit three times instead of one <laughs> 
So it's like, and I can spam vengeance, but I can't spam strike. So I don't know. It's a shame because the ability looks cool. I think the theme is cool, right? Like, it sounds cool. It looks cool. But uh, but then it does. <laughs> it doesn't hit as it sounds. Let's just say that, right? Yeah. And there was there was a uh, a forum post about people making guesses what's in the next patch, and I I put that I think that several skills will get reworks. This is mm -hmm. this is one of those skills that I think they're secretly going to do a quiet rework on it. Yeah, maybe. I'd be I'd be very surprised if in 7.9 or 8.0 that Erasing Strike hasn't had a rework of some yeah, sort. Yeah, especially because this is the this is the Void Knight signature skill. Like this should be good. Sure, you know? only damaging skill as a Void Knight. Like it, it yeah, is like, the but, only skill. But uh, like if you compare, you know, Forge Guard has Forge Strike, Paladin has Holy Aura. Like, come on, man, those abilities are pretty good compared to Holy Aura, especially. Holy Aura is so good, right? So yeah, and Erasing Strike should be even more potent than those because the Void Knight yeah. is giving up defense. It's supposed to be yeah, an offense. Exactly, offensive you're supposed to be sure. like a crazy damage dealer version of Sentinel, and right now it's not, right? So yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, the warring orb, I guess. Oh yeah, let's let's get into the good old orb of doom here. It's fucking OP. <laughs> I think I love orb. It's a shame it kind of like lacks your computer a, a lot. Uh, but I think orb is really good. I I think orb is really really good. I I like two thirds of the tree. I think the right side is nailed. I I like it. Yeah, there's, there's like yeah, five different ways the, to build it just on that one side. Uh, the left side, I've never looked into it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> exactly, the left side yeah. is completely useless. Um, I've yeah. tried it, but none of it like the whole void rifts on kill. Like yeah. the way void rifts work, it's not good for building into off of devouring orb, especially since it's only for the devouring orb void rifts. Yeah, kills. When Don't like it. The devouring orb is never gonna kill in the first place, right? So yeah, the whole left side just needs to be changed into something completely different um maybe like a pure spell version so you you actually do damage with it you know so we were talking about how we want void knight to have like a more spell dps like identity so maybe yeah, that's the I'm, way to do it you know i think it'd be pretty cool if on the left side just make it look just make it feel like a spell and not a buff right pretty much right yeah instead of instead of this uh instead of going void rift and ailments like they did on there i it would be yeah. way cooler if it turned it into a channeling fucking like fireball, you know, avoid yeah, avoid yeah. ball shooter. More damage uh, and just give it damage. More damage, a channeling ability, uh you know, it it had hit damage or even better, um, it was able to split or explode, you know, it was kind of yeah, a cross yeah. between fireball and, and volcanic orb, you know, kind of a avoid yeah, mix yeah. in there. I feel you. Uh, but as for like the bottom, I think they nailed it. You know, I like the move speed yeah. boost you can get. I, I, I love like, it. Yeah. I love the orbit around you for the huge mana cost, but you can actually you know kind of negate it as you go down farther. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like the protections you can get on the right side. I like that if you go complete into the abyssal orb frequency and you tag team that with the plague bear staff, it's just an absolute poison annihilator. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and it also looks pretty fucking cool when the, the orbs like go chasing like enemies off screen. It's kind of like it makes you feel like you're literally the doom bringer, kind of like you're this void. It kind of like fits the theme, right? Yeah, and that and that would be really cool if they if they brought like that kind of orb chasing. Like that feels like the best spell part of it, except that yeah. it's indirectly cast by you. Like you're just casting the orb, but the orb is yeah. then is doing the spell that you wish you could do. Yeah, um, exactly. Like you should be able to do that. Manually, not like, and that, like that, that would be, be your skill. That should yeah. be your right right click kind of thing. And it would be cool if, like, on the left side, you could control that. You could say, "Oh, I want the duration to last one second, and then it it blows up into like eight of those abyssal yeah, yeah. orbs that chase things around. Like, and you or have... maybe when it explodes, it leaves something on the floor, right? Like a like a classic, like oh, like what other skills have really? Oh, you know, mm -hmm. you have your fissures and you have your pulls of blood. Yeah, exactly. You, like you all these things. Chairs. And, you know, it could even be that on the left side, um, it no longer, like, lasts for eight seconds. You could actually make it explode, and, and maybe that's uh -huh. what it makes... So then it does the Void Rift, so then you're actually yeah. using a Void Rift skill. 
Um, which actually brings me, I am surprised there's not a Void Rift actual, like, skill. Like, actually called Void Rift. And you make yeah, a Rift I, I, uh, and specialize yeah. it. And that specialization works for any other skill that uses Void Rifts. So I agree. That would be so sick. So especially because it would, be, it would basically address the things we're talking about. Because you could cause Void Rifts with Volatile Reversal, with a Racing Strike, with, all, you know, and... Suddenly, you, it could be like the smite of Void Knight almost, you know, like yeah. uh, the proc that it just procs and it makes all your abilities better. Uh, it I could agree. be that thing that brings them, you know, synergizes them together and be like, oh, now they're all yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then I, I like the throttle. So we, we talked about how Abyssal Echoes has that throttle between mana efficiency and recast. And, mm -hmm. and as you go on the right side, you know, the right bottom there, you have the mana efficiency versus duration. You have the, yeah. the cooldown recovery. You have the, you know, in a couple of different spots. You have the additional charges. Like, there's a lot of... Like, they give you five different options for how to, like, try and make it work with you. To, yeah. You know, you can either have a lot of devouring orbs, or you can make it really cheap, or you can make them just not last very long. Like, there's a lot of options. Uh, to imagine the additional charges set up with the Void Knight passive when they echo. Because they echo, as long as they're, like, alive, it feels like they can still echo, right? So you, I bet you can get, like, fucking 15 orbs on yours or shit. <laughs> like... Yeah, I've, I've had quite a bit. I took the 40% the duration one, but then I went with the 5 points in the cooldown for that 150% uh -huh. cooldown. Um, I try to stay out of the other one because that, that um, as you add that more duration decrease in there, it gets too short. Mm-hmm. But just with that 150%, your your orb lasts for 11 seconds, and yeah. your cooldown is like 1.6 seconds or something. And when it echoes, you can get up to like 10 of them at all times. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was it's, saying. It's, yeah, it's pretty insane. <laughs> and if and you then, have Blake Bear, hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because all of them are ca all of them are casting the frequency thing, like the yeah. You put the nine points in there, and and they're casting yeah. like every 0.6 <laughs> seconds. It's it's a bit ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, I like Orb though. Uh, it's really good. And again, maybe the other, the left part of the tree needs something. Right? Yeah, if they if they don't make a skill where they synergize that Void Rift, like I just don't see the point. Why would you want to increase the hit damage of something that only procs when something's died? Like single targets out yeah. the window on that. It's useless. Yeah, exactly. Like, how, and, and to be honest, like I think single target is the main thing for most builds, right? Because every every build kind of like can deal with trash mobs. The problem is like when you get the big boys, uh, it's gonna take ten minutes. <laughs> like, because uh, again, all of these mechanics that are just based on kill, it's just like, well, they don't help me versus the hard enemies. So whatever, you know. Yeah, and I've heard that talked about before. I don't remember who it was, but it was a, it was a big yeah. discussion about how on kill effects should just be gotten rid of. Like, there's no yeah, point. Yeah, I agree. I don't like them. <laughs> I think on kill buffs are okay, you know, on the passives, but not on, like, sure, you know, you're in the fight, you're fighting a lot, and you get, like, a bit of a... But I think I, I rather prefer the, the hits when you get hit and when you hit enemies, so you actually have control over them. Yeah. I right? like... Uh, when you get hit, you get defensive buffs. You, when you hit enemies, you get offensive buffs. I think that's a better way. Yeah, the the mage I think was the main source of the topic, and elemental nova is like the most notorious skill for it. You have a yeah. lot of these things where you get ward on kill, and it's like, yeah. well, ward on kill does me no good in a boss fight because I need the yeah, ward exactly. during the fight and after the boss. Especially that's, now that's that the that efficiency is like ruined, right? Because before it, well, at least you kill a lot of stuff, you get the word, and then you fight the boss with the word you gathered. But now the word you lose it so fast that it's basically, <laughs> yeah, basically can... useless, right? So it's a whole different place now. Yeah. But yeah. Well, that's pretty much for me. Uh, the boring orb. I, I I like it though. It looks cool. And yeah, normally, huh? It's a fun skill. Yep, I th that's the uh, that's the last one I got on my on my page here. Yep, anomaly is sick. What a no what a good skill. This Again. this is uh, probably the first skill that you can use the entire tree. Like yeah, no matter how, like there are the leech is kind of like turned into like the most potent thing. But you yeah, I mean I always go to the right side. I just take the right side with the but yeah you can you can use it many many ways. I guess I should say, I also go to the right side, and it's kind of turned into the right side. 
but this was a thing where I tried everything on it because it all looked so yeah. good. And it is good. Yeah, yeah. But it, 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 the game itself is turned into where defense matters more than offense. Yeah, exactly. And so the I right agree. side is kind of what we've negated it's, to. It's just more valuable at the moment with the meta, yeah. But as, as that changes, or as you get your defense on Void Knight from something else and you don't need that, there's so yeah. many cool things on here. Like the ailment coming back, you know, reset, or yeah. the future strikes yeah, yeah. doing, you know, 400% increased damage. Yeah, or, or, and or, even the CC mechanics, where, where you can send the enemies, like, uh, you know, just like, because normally I just, I get the effects triggered of, of you, right, the immediacy point. So you basically lose the ability to, like, send enemies forward. Even that, I think, is going to be valuable. For example, when you're in group play, maybe you you want to CC a boss so everyone's ready to combo or whatever, right? And even that is going to have some utility, I think. Yeah. And but the other... The, yeah, uh, the very first way I played this skill was, was with that. I did the time lock up at the top so that you would mm -hmm. make them disappear for four seconds. And then when they came back, yeah. they'd, be, they'd be time locked for like another four yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. And then They're it'd like be frozen. All... And then it would be off cooldown right after that, so you could do it again. And so, like, they were, it was like 100% CC on mobs because they'd either be in the future or they yeah, would be yeah. time -locked. Or they would be frozen. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was really cool. And I, I have a feeling that'll come back as, as the defense part of the game's taken care of. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah. It's cool. And I, and but going back to the right side, I think the right side is just like so good. The lifesteal is so good. The cooldown is great. When it when you know when you get it to cast on you, so you can keep the crit, the crit buff is insane. The life still, the two hundred percent increase life still. If you already have the life still of the void night tree, like you get like what forty percent void life still, void yeah, life still and melee life still. It's really crazy. Like and to going back to uh, what I was talking when we were talking about smite, you know how smite you can take the nodes that take away HP to, and give you more damage, right? So basically yep. every time you cast smite, they basically chunk your HP, right? Yep. But it does a shit ton of damage. But it's kind of funny because if you get this life still from anomaly that you can only access through Void Knight, basically you can get the five points of that, and you're always full HP because you have so much void and smite is void damage, right? You do so much life still that you can basically run the the best way to do damage uh, as with void uh, smite what was with smite and throwing attacks is actually by going void knight with anomaly because you can sustain the node that gives you more damage, but uh, you don't have anything in the tree going for you for it going that route. That is what I was mentioning before about. That how Void Knight is supposed to be like this melee thing, if you look at the passives. But all the spells that we've been talking about are just spells. I'm like, like, like so it's like, well, am I melee? Am I spell? Am I squishy? Am I, what, what am I? Because again, all the passives on Void Knight are melee attack speed, melee damage, melee, melee, melee. You know, like you get the melee, uh, me increased Void protections on melee hit, increase uh, everything's on melee procs. But there's nothing you want to build melee around i feel so i don't know yeah exactly. but uh, i love anomaly that's for sure i will say the only thing i i know this game really likes that multiplayer that a lot of classes are going to buff each other um yeah but i will say for that void mal over the top on the table that increases your health leech for 200 percent that yeah. that's going to be gonna... absolutely make this the mandatory way to build the skill um, yeah, because you can give that so to your gonna, everyone in the bubble is gonna get it, right? Your entire team is gonna get it. Yeah, and and they keep it. I mean, you're gonna have to fully build into the bubble, so one that you have 100 percent uptime, two so yeah, they yeah. can get. The I effects, always do that. Yeah, you know, for extra seconds after they have left the bubble, just to make sure that. They and keep you can it. give your entire team like fucking crazy crit chance too. Like holy, uh, is that, that's two, gonna be good. Two hundred percent health leech increase, and you're talking about a hundred and fifty percent more crit. I just like it's it's gonna be mandatory to go this way when the game is released, mm -hmm. or or either that mm -hmm. or you'll have two void knights, and one's gonna be used for the buff of, of anomaly, and the other mm -hmm. guy is gonna use and it. And get, get a paladin line. also for the holy aura buff, and there you go, the entire party has hundred percent crit. <laughs> yeah, and then you're gonna have I I I have to relook at, it, but can't uh, um, forge guard with its um, God, what is it called shield crafter, the node that makes ring of shields proc on hit. Yeah, you can craft, you can cast it on allies. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, that you can yeah. cast it on allies, or the shield itself can cast buffs on allies. But basically, yeah. if you have two void knights, 
and you have a paladin and a forge guard. It's a pretty well synergized group of people. Yeah, hell yeah, they're the the four knights. <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah, I, I don't even know what you would throw in there. You might even throw in another sentinel that's using warpath, <laughs> just to yeah. keep everything in one area. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> yeah, just to have a bait. You know. Me personally, I think it'd be really cool uh, to throw in like a necro with a hundred minions because all those <laughs> yeah. all those minions get the two hundred percent health lead. Oh shit! And the crit. <laughs> so like. Your minions would never die, and then you could, you know, <laughs> s assemble some abominations that have ring of shields mixed. Like, I just the combos are gonna be fucking crazy. Um, there's there's some things like if you gave Werebear 200% health leech, uh, would he ever yeah. die? <laughs> like, they got they got some crazy interactions and balancing to do with multiplayer. I I almost feel like that 200% health leech will probably um, be nerfed yeah. a little bit. Uh, could you imagine it's fucking that? strong already? So imagine yeah. on team play. Yeah. yeah, imagine giving that to like um, a death seal reaper that's already leeching, <laughs> just massive yeah. amounts, and you just trip, you Immortal. just triple it. Yeah, for immortal. Yeah, it, yeah it's really, really good. Ridiculous. Wait, hold well, on. Uh, it's kind of funny though that how we're talking and most of the actual Void Knight skills that because a lot of people th think I think everyone agrees that Void Knight is the weakest of the three Sentinels, right? But uh, actually, the skills of Void Knight like Reversal, Echoes, Orb, and Anomaly they're insane. Like, in fact, my Forge Guard uses three of them, <laughs> right? Yeah, the, the skills are good, and I think the Void Knight himself. Just needs a slight tweak, and he'll he'll become either equal or, or better than the rest. Of the, his, yeah, but his problem is defense, though. Like, I've never had well, a problem. You, doing... I run orb for infant for defense, an anomaly for the life steal one. That's how I do it. But I he's just he still lacks. Like I've I've ran, I've ran the exact same build on the forge guard and the void knight. Like I had him set up yeah. the exact same way, and the the void. Forge guard can go a hundred waves higher with the exact same yeah, gear, yeah. same setup, the exact same gear, same everything. It, yeah, and it's that thirty percent damage reduction, and it's the fact that Ring of Shields is procking around. Well, and not just that, but also the passes, right? Because you have, for example, on 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 Forge guard, you have the passive powerful throw, right? You have a Armor that gives you seventy five percent increase. Yeah, that passive is fucking crazy. Like it's so good. And then and, for, uh... and you have the increased strength and increased armor, the might. That is also super good. So much armor. Like you, there is not a single point of strength in Void Knight, which I found crazy. And there, you can't build strength on Void Knight, but you have it on Paladin and you have it on Forge Guard. In Forge Guard, you have a lot actually of strength. I, I'm assuming what that has to do with is, um, it looks like they tried to tie Attunement and Void together. Um, I noticed yeah. that all the Void spells and skills but... all get boosted by Attunement. <laughs> So that's why yeah, that's the crazy right. thing, right? It's what we've been saying, right? Like the tree is telling me, right? Like, like I look at the tree, I look at the defenses, and it's telling me, okay, this character is supposed to be range because he's not as tanky. He's gonna do more damage with spells and, and stuff. You have all the echo stuff, but then you look at the passive, and it's all about melee. So it's like, am I melee or what am I? Because half of the tree wants you to go melee, but melee sucks on Void Knight. And the stuff that is actually good has nothing to do with melee, at least in my eyes. Like, for example, Anomaly is so good with Smite, just for the reason I just said with the lifesteal, that you can you can get away with using Smite, extra damage nodes. Um, so I, I I don't know. I, I think I, I just think Void Knight is weird. Like I look at Void Knight and everything I see I like it, but it's just like it's kind of it doesn't quite mesh together like it does on Paladin or Forge Guard. I, I feel when I'm building a Void Knight. I always feel like, okay, I put like 40 points in Void Knight, and then the rest is like, okay, do I actually want all of this other stuff? <laughs> right? Because I don't, like, I'd rather put, i rather put my points in Forge Guard on Paladin, right? Like, because the lower trees are just so good on Forge Guard and Paladin. So, I, I don't know. And it's the opposite. When I'm playing Paladin and when I'm playing Forge Guard, I feel like, holy fuck, I need more points. Like, I want everything, right? Everything's good. Especially on Paladin, I feel like I always lack points. Uh, yeah, Paladin and Forge Guard. Uh, the thing with Forge Guard is all the good stuff is right at the top of the tree and requires a massive amount of points. You know, yeah. To get that, if you're if you're Forge Guard and you're wanting that, you know, uh, three hundred percent increased damage on potion use, you gotta yeah. you gotta put forty five points in there to unlock it. 
Yeah. And then you got to put another 10 in there to have it. So you're talking but, 55. But the, good, but the good thing about Forge Guard is that those 55, 55 points that you're using to get there are all good. Because, so, you know, you can get you can get strength, you can get battle hearted, you can get the potion fine. You, if you're going block, you can get the relying block, you know, the ones that gives you uh, 50 elemental protections per block, which is kind of super crazy buff. Uh, you, you can get, again, you can get Regenerator, you know, you can get uh, Might, like, you can get the crit, uh, Duelist and Lethal Strikes, which are already 20 points for the crit and the crit multiplier. E everything's good. You can get, po I look at the, uh, at Forge Tree and every, I want everything. There's not a single point where I go like, eh, I don't know if I want this, you know? Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Kind of makes you think. But yeah. Yeah, I I agree. Um, See, and uh, to be honest, I have a bit of the same with Paladin, right? Like Paladin has a lot of good stuff. You have the divine essences. You have the crit avoid, you know, the crit avoidance on the on the tree. You have all the bleed, the ignite stuff. You have all the the block notes with the shield. Uh, you have the divine balls, the uh, the block chance. It's a pretty good tree. But when I look at Void, like the I like I like the bottom tree of Void Knight. Like the flat damage is really nice, you know, the flat, the lifesteal is very nice. And then future strikes are kind of okay. And then after that, what? Uh, oh, you have to invest true. 50, uh, you, you invest 15 points to get the Echoes. Uh, I feel like the Echoes should be like almost, you, should, you know, you have to invest literally uh, 15, po uh, 15 points, 16 points to just get the Echoes to like be more than 20%. So I don't know. Yeah, there's, I, I think it's too many points for the Echoes. I think it should just be yeah, a couple of notes. It should be like half, yeah. The one thing that and I... you're and you're also and you're also losing stuff because it reduces your attack speed and your increases your mana cost of all your stuff, so it's it's not I don't know. I am I am really confused in the whole top half of the tree. They don't do much for anything other than Malid. I mean you're right, they don't Yeah, have, that's what I'm that's they what don't I'm have saying. Spell and they don't have you know anything? There, there's not but even any you... like defensive, really. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You have, it's you all void melee ages. stuff. But void ages is cool, I guess. But but I mean, it's five points and that's it, right? <laughs> so, and again, you got some vitality there, which is uh, you got a lot of vitality and stuff, right? On actually, you have the strength on Doom Knight, but yeah. Uh, but you have you have some vitality and stuff, but vitality is not even that important anymore with all the new. And then you have a bunch of health, for whatever reason, on on Void Knight. You have a bunch of health everywhere. That's just weird. I, I really feel like the top half of that tree is missing some of like the most important... Like It should have something... Uh, actually, it, sh it should have three things. It should have something that procs on when you get hit, like uh, either Devouring Orb or Abyssal Echoes. Yeah. Uh, yeah it should have uh, a way to buff Time Rift. Um, yeah. Time rift either you know should proc on hit or, or enemies in uh, afflicted by time rift take hundred percent more damage something yeah. like that you a, know a so something something potion the the potion note of forge guard level of buff of damage come on forge guard is three hundred percent increased damage like come on yeah it, it should definitely have some sort of buff like that or uh, um, or even if it was like a chance to cast void rift on a spell cast. And then, yeah. and then the third thing that it should have, um, it should have void beams in there. I, I don't know why it yeah. doesn't have. It should have some sort of spell and effect, you know, or damage yeah. boost going up, but it doesn't. But, I, but instead, you have dread, which is 15 points, right, to just get a bit of movement speed, which is fine, right? But 15 points, come and, on, man. You know, to be fair, I, I mean. The 15 points in echoes, you are talking about the chance to do double damage. You, when you do an echo, you're gonna, you know, do the damage. Yeah, but I mean, most of the time you're one shotting trash anyway, so it's. I don't know. Yeah, but I, I mean, I see what they. And uh, why, why is it only increased uh, melee attack speed? For example, Time Legion, only melee attack speed. Why is it not just attack speed? Well, because you have Smite and Time Reversal. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the thing. Imagine if this was general attack speed, right? Or even cast speed included. So you could actually use it for casting stuff. I, always, I just think it would be so much... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, the, echoes affect, the, the echoes affect spells and throwing attacks, so why not the attack speed also? Like, it doesn't... It, it just feels like it, they want to push me into this melee 
world. But uh, and then if you look at the reduce uh, and if you get Avatar of Regret, it reduces all your attack speed, your attack speed, your throwing attack speed, all of it. But you it only increases your melee attack speed. So it's like so you're basically fucking me. <laughs> it's like I don't know. I, I will. It's too too much melee stuff. I think for Void Knight. Yeah, just like and again, I think that the echoes, the echo mechanic, is not even that great for attack. For for example, I was trying Void Knight with Vengeance, so basically I did the same build that I did on uh, on Forge Guard, but I did it on I did it on Void Knight, right? And I you realize like basically you would hit something with Vengeance, right? It would die, right? And then you're just going to the next location, and then two seconds after the thing is dead, then the echo will come, right? And it's like, well, basically, all my echoes are not doing much just because uh, they're echoing with the enemy is already dead, right? And even when you're fighting, like, uh, imagine you're fighting like a beetle or something because you're kiting all the time and the enemy, you're moving and then you're not standing still, right? Because you want to juke the AoEs and whatever. Most of the echoes don't even hit the target when you're using vengeance, right? Uh, Probably the only ability that benefits from Echo's melee ability is probably a Racing Strike, just because the AoE is pretty huge. So, I don't know. Uh, I like Void Knight, it just needs some love, man. It needs some tweaking on the top tree especially. The bottom tree is fine, it's just the top tree. Yeah, I agree. I think it's it's probably a tree that's going to see a rework. Yeah. Especially because I, I think you also love Void Knight. I think Void Knight is the most original, like basically archetype we have honestly like with all the time it's so cool so it definitely deserves some love yeah there's there's a lot they could do with it but i'm i think it just needs a couple more skills right now and maybe a reworked passive tree a little bit just to to give it a little boost but it's it's on the verge yeah. i mean it's not bad it's just it's it's not no, as no it's good not as bad the others it's definitely not bad i mean i used it but I don't know. I, I I I just I just think it it needs more damage. Like I wanna I wanna feel like if I use if I select Void Knight, I I need to really feel like oh shit I'm doing more damage with this class than I was doing with Paladin for example, right? And it doesn't feel like that at all at the moment. So yeah. All right. Well, I think we nailed all the skills for the yep. Void Knight. Uh, there's a couple that we didn't get that are on the uh, on what the 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 paladin like smelter's wrath and and such um but we'll we'll include this in the next one we have we've broken three hours of talking about just one Ooh. class <laughs> well boy night uh yeah i guess the next ones are gonna be shorter just because a lot of the stuff we covered uh in this video covers the other classes right uh, yeah we'll, other... we'll probably knock out like just a few skills on that and then go to another class and yeah hit a few more hours on the next one but i think this will work for uh for episode number one we'll uh see what it does see if people like it at all see if yep. there'll even be another one i mean even if even if only 10 people watch it and only a few of them like it and the rest don't care for it uh, you know that's something for them like yeah i like doing video. it too it's cool talking about the game you it make, gives you ideas so yeah and it I, was good conversation so yeah i don't think it's going to be a horrible thing i i i feel oh Here's, here's what I've noticed with uh, YouTube recently. is It seems like a lot of people have kind of dispersed out of uh, Last Epoch for the time being. I don't think enough content mm -hmm. came out in the last patch. Um, uh -huh. I noticed that yeah. with views on YouTube with everyone. And I think that's why like Thighworm and a couple others have kind of migrated to like Path of Exile for the time being. Is uh -huh. It kind of died off real hard. Um, so mm -hmm. I still think that this... That we'll, we'll still get a few hundred views I think on this video and I think that'll be enough to tell us whether they they like it enough for us to continue. Yeah, sure. But yeah, it is cool. fun to talk about, and you know, it's background noise. That's all it's meant for. It's yeah, it's not yeah. Super... meant to just while you're grinding monolith, you know, maybe you learn something, maybe you you get some ideas you want to share in the comments or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we got ideas, and we've been playing with them, so I can only imagine somebody who's new being like, like that that does sound like something I'd like to try. Yeah, uh, and I mean, Hell it wasn't yeah. like a super informative thing, but. I think there's enough info yeah. in there for them to... Thanks for having me. Try something. Oh, yeah. Thanks for spending three hours with me. Oh, I love it, dude. <laughs> thanks for... Uh, yeah, and thanks for fixing my uh, <laughs> my recording no device, because I would have been struggling no with that forever. No worries. 
Cool. So I'll talk to you soon, I guess, for next one or whatever. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the sack, but I got the next couple of days yeah. off, so I'll be in, I'll probably be in enjoy your, your rest and. Oh really? Okay, I'll I'll be around then. Yeah, if I wake up cool. early enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'll see ya. Oh yeah, I'll I'll see you on the ladder when I take over your forge guard here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. relax, for them. <laughs> relax. Okay. Yeah, let me enjoy it at least one more day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, All I gotta right. re I gotta re gear some stuff. It'll be a little bit. Okay. Yeah, man. All right, have a good one. All right, everybody, thanks for hanging out. And like I said, if you liked the video and you would like to see more like this, go ahead and throw up a like and comment in the section below that it was something that you enjoyed and you would like the other three to four parts in the future. Uh, me and Lizard will definitely put them together, but if it doesn't seem like it's something people want, then we probably won't post them and go through the whole rendering process because for a video this long, it's quite the process. All right, thank you, everybody. Have a good day.